Hey everybody, um, hopefully today you're doing well, I know I am, um, today's sermon is called Breathe Again, um, let's pray, Father endow me with your spirit like never before, reach into the camera, Help me say something to touch everyone that will watch this, that is watching this, that you want to hear this, Lord. Let the message of this sermon um, come straight from heaven. And Lord, I pray that you will just permeate every heart, every spirit, every mind, every soul. Lord God, clear out the clutter and distractions from our lives. Lord, and I pray that you will just have your way in our homes, have your way in our lives, have your way in our spirits, Lord God. Bring down heaven today through this sermon. Touch lives, infuse your joy with people so that we can breathe again, so that we can live again, so that we can um, uh, be in our lives instead of just um, and yet, instead of just on the periphery of our lives. Speak to me, speak through me, in the name of Jesus, amen. It was so funny how this sermon came about. Um, I was singing, um, the song Breathe Again by Tony Braxton, and, um, the song is basically about this, this woman saying how she misses this man so much that she will never breathe again until he comes back to her, um, and if their love should end, she will never breathe again. It's just, it's just so wrong, and so, and so misguided. Uh, this song, but but then then again, I was singing it yesterday, and the term "breathe again" just caught me, and. The Lord said to tell you that you will breathe again. In this pandemic, uh, we have been so stressed out. Um, some of us have been so stressed out, and some of us um, are taking it more easy, easier. But the people I've met have been so stressed out and so scared for many different reasons, whether it be job loss, whether it be the medical crisis, whether it be the racial thing going on in the U.S., whether it be all what we're seeing on the news. Um, and he's saying, we have been so busy in, in survival mode that we haven't taken the time to breathe. Um, as you as you guys know, um, or maybe you don't know, I was an English major. So um, before I got my religious uh, my religious education degree from Tyndale uh, College, so I was looking up the word um, breathe, and there are two definitions uh, to the word breathe that I would like to share with you now. So just let me get it up. So, breathe is defined as, first def definition is 
to draw air and expel it from your lungs. And to take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. And to exhale freely. So this third definition of breathe really caught my attention. Um, to exhale freely like... Like, okay, let me just breathe now. And um, a lot of us are exhaling freely in the physical sense. Like, we're breathing. But we're, in the spiritual sense, we're holding our, holding our breath so much so that it's spiritually killing us. And the Lord is saying that you can breathe again. You can breathe again. You can live again. And what I'm, what I mean by we are we are um breathing in the spirit what i mean is we take in word we take in worship we take in all of that we listen to worship music we read our bibles but we're not um expelling it we're not we're not putting it out and and if you hold your breath for too long, um, you you don't get oxygen. And when you don't get oxygen for about two minutes, you start turning blue and eventually you'll die. A lot of people are physically living but spiritually dying for the simple reason is that they're not breathing. They're not spiritually breathing. They've taken in their breath and they're holding it. And in the spirit, you can hold your breath for years in, real, in the natural you can only hold your breath for two or three minutes before you die, before you lose consciousness. But a lot of people spiritually, they've held their breath for so long that they're dying and they're going on autopilot. They're watching church online or for those of you who can physically go to church, they're going to church, they're worshiping, they're, they're singing, they're doing all what they need to do while still holding their breath because they just don't want to let go of the reins. And the Lord is saying, you're saying like the lady in the song, you're saying, I can never breathe again. This this weight is too heavy. I I need to balance it because if I let go and spiritually breathe again, it might this m might kill me. But beloved, what you don't understand, spiritually holding your breath, um, holding it in holding that anger in, holding that unforgiveness in, holding that um, resentment in. That's what's killing you. And to let it go, to breathe, to exhale it, will free you. And you, you don't have to worry 
I'm going to, all you have to do is exhale. All you have to do is exhale. There was this movie a long time ago, about, about 20 something years ago now, called Waiting to Exhale. Um, and it was about these four women uh, dealing with life and with men and four different situations. Angela Bassett, Whitney Houston, and a few others were were in that movie. And at the beginning of the movie, all these four women thought that they needed a, a man to like carry them and whatever. And then they realized that it was not the white woman that they needed. It was not the white man that, it was not a man that they needed. It was just to trust and let go and enjoy the process and that they were okay um, being alone. And the Lord is saying spiritually, you, you can trust, you can let go, you can exhale. And I remember a song on that soundtrack. Um, it was, it was, um, it went like this. Um, Everyone falls in love sometimes. Sometimes it's wrong. Sometimes it's right. For every win, someone must fail. There comes a point when, when you exhale. Um, and I, th I think the Lord is saying, you've been waiting to exhale. It's time to do it now. You've been holding so much in trying to keep it together, trying to be super mom and um, homeschool your kids like a boss, trying to be super wife and have dinner on the table every night for your husband and uh, be there when he needs you and you're trying to be there for your church or you're trying to be there for your boss or for us single people. You're trying to be there for your boyfriend. You're trying to be there for your sister. You're trying to be there for your mother. And he's saying in the spirit realm and in the physical realm, you've been carrying too much for too long. You've been holding too much in. And he's saying it's time to breathe again. And you don't have to wait to exhale. You don't have to wait to exhale. You don't have to wait for some moment in time when you can just, um, when there's this big destiny moment and that you can just breathe. He's like, you can, you can do it now. You can breathe in the small moments. You don't have to wait for a big moment where you can let it all go. You can you can let it go in the small moments. It's the small, it's the small moments that matter. You don't have to wait till you get married to um, breathe again. You you don't have to wait till you get that job to breathe again. You can breathe again now. You've been carrying it for. You've been carrying the stress in your life for too long and the Lord is saying he wants you to breathe again and you're saying like the girl the lady in the song I can never breathe again I can never love again I can never live again and the Lord is saying yes you can you can breathe again you can live again you can love again joy is possible all you have to do is let go, exhale, breathe again, and know that God's 
throughout all he is and all you are. He's got you. You don't need to carry it alone. You don't need to carry the weight alone. You don't need to be super sister or super mom or super dad or super pastor or all that stuff. You just need to be. You don't need to be anything. All you need to do is just be. And the Lord is saying, just let me be in you. Let me use your gifts. Let me use your talents. Let me take over your body and carry the burden for you. Um, there is... I often liken preaching to this movie that I saw. Um... A lot of pastors spend a lot of time with study and they spend a lot of time doing this and doing that. What I like uh, like in preaching to is like someone takes over your, um, the Lord uses my body, my words, my gifts, my talents to expose the gospel, the good news. And then when he, when he lets go of me, not lets go of me like he leaves me, but when his spirit lifts, I go back to myself until the next time he picks me up. Sometimes pl planning is a good thing. Planning is a wonderful thing. Pl planning your sermon topics or whatever. But sometimes I think uh, planning and being uh, so so set in this is the way things are done, this is the way I have to do my kids, it doesn't leave room for spont spontaneity and it doesn't leave room for God to do what he wants to do. And it when you when you schedule yourself to death um you just can miss what you're longing for you can miss what the schedule's purpose for like if you don't the lord has told me this about church service um if you don't leave room in the service for him to move and schedule things uh, his way, the very thing that you prayed for at the beginning of the service won't happen and you're, and you're wondering why you feel dry and why you feel empty. It's because you don't let the service, um, in the service there was no breathing room. It was scheduled to the hilt. And I believe in planning. I believe in scheduling. But sometimes we as people, we as pastors, we as, uh, we as just human beings have scheduled um, God right out of the service and scheduled God right out of our lives. And even our Christianity could be a schedule. We wake up, we read our Bible reading plan, we read our scripture, and then we go to work, we stop at lunchtime, we pray, we, we do this, and then we come home, feed the kids, and we, you know, we, we do our daily schedule, whatever it is, and we've scheduled God, right out of our lives, and I'm not saying planning is a good thing, but I'm saying leave room in your life for breath. Leave room in your life to just be calm and let God speak to your spirit. He's dying right now to speak to his people, but we've just so scheduled him. We 
we want a formula for everything and there is no formula for 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 everything planning is a good thing it gives you direction and and purpose and you know what's coming next but over planning can can be a bad thing cuz you don't have room for the surprises in your life i heard a preacher what one time said that that said stay surprisable stay surprisable leave room for spontaneity in your church if you're a pastor in your life in yourself um i find in some churches that i've been to we ask for spontaneity but then we've scheduled god to the hilt we we've scheduled the service so much and and he doesn't want to uh we want him to move the way he wants to move but yet we've scheduled everything <laughs> it's sort of funny um how we do that <laughs> um and and he said we're like god do what you want to do but do it within our schedule it's so funny how we do that um but anyway leave t- time in your life to breathe and when you do that you'll see that you don't have to do this thing alone you weren't designed to do this thing alone he wants to take over your body and help you do the task that you have to do and that you're struggling with and he, he's going he's saying if you let me take over you will breathe again and and there's there's someone out there today that struggling with a broken relationship and you're wondering will i ever breathe again yes you will just stay the course go at the pace that god wants you to for this moment and sometimes le- learning to breathe again is a process and don't rush the process stay at the p- pace that God wants you to stay at and you will breathe again your life is not over it this loss could be your new beginning or it could be your destruction it's your choice that you have to make and he's saying you will breathe again in fact he's helping you breathe again right now he's helping your finances breathe again all the all that all those years that you've been holding your spiritual breath you can let it go you can let it go and know that he's got you And I promise you, I promise you that that you will always breathe again. The Lord promises, He promised you is that that you will always breathe again. He. The Lord promises, he promises that that you will breathe and live again. The Lord promises, he promises that that you will live and breathe again. The Lord promises, he promises that that you will live and breathe again 
He's breathing life into whatever situation. Receive the life that he's breathing into you right now. Receive the life. Exchange your your death, your spiritual death for his life right now. He promises, he promises that, that you will live and breathe again. Yes, Lord, thank you for your life. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for breathing into us like you started creation with your, with your words and your breath. But you said you breathed into man, and we became a living soul, soul, Lord. But some of us got lost. We need you to breathe into us again. Breathe your life, God. Breathe your spirit, God. Breathe your joy, God. Breathe your understanding, God. Breathe your peace, God. Give us, give us the knowledge to know that you need, that you will be with us, that you are guiding us, that you are loving us. Wrap your arms of love around us. Wrap your arms of protection around us. You know we're worried. You know we're scared. You know where we're insecure, oh God. Breathe your life into every situation. Heal, restore, deliver, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, receive his breath today. Okay, beloved, I'll see you later. The Lord promises, he promises that, that you will live and breathe again. The Lord promises, he promises that, that you will live and breathe again. The Lord promises, he promises that that you will live and breathe again. The Lord promises, he promises that, that you will live and breathe again. The Lord promises, he promises that, that you will live and breathe again. Receive it. The Lord promises, he promises that, that you will live and breathe again. The Lord promises, he promises that, that you will live and breathe again. The Lord promises, he promises that, that you will live and breathe again. The Lord promises, He promises that, that you will live and breathe again. The Lord promises, he promises that, that you will live and breathe again. The Lord promises, he promises that, that you will live and breathe again. The Lord, the Lord says to you, just trust me, tr child, that, that you will live and breathe again. The Lord, 
the Lord says to you to take my child that that you will live and breathe again.